There is currently 20 unique classes to choose from in the Pathfinder 2e system, with two more on the way. With that many choices available to you, that first character creation can be really difficult and lead to some analysis paralysis. I'm here today to help alleviate some of that by giving you a little bit of information on every single class in the system and help you decide which class you should play in Pathfinder 2e. Howdy! My name is Nonat, and if you are interested in more Pathfinder 2e content like this, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Also, before we jump right into it, don't forget to click the link in the description to check out Sinclair's Library, a supplement for both Pathfinder 2e and D&D 5th Edition. We just cracked $100,000 in funding with three weeks left on the project. We're so excited that we get to bring this content to you, but we got a lot of cool stretch goals we still want to meet. So if you want to check that out, links in the description. On with the video. The Alchemist. If you like crafting items, this is probably the class for you. Bombs, elixirs, mutagens, poisons, and more. There is a massive list of alchemical items, and alchemists can craft all of them. I won't lie to you, this list is actually kind of intimidating and will require some research on the player's part. I wouldn't recommend an alchemist as a first character class, but if you are experienced with TTRPGs and Pathfinder 2e specifically, you might find the alchemist an incredibly fun class that you can really sink your teeth into and change on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're looking for a unique experience that's not quite a spellcaster, but not quite a marshal, the alchemist will be perfect for you. The Barbarian often gets written off as just a rage machine that hits things for a lot of damage, but Pathfinder 2e has made Barbarians a lot more than that. Now, they're still rage machines that hit things for a lot of damage, but your subclass changes how you hit things, and for how much and what other unique abilities you get beyond just hitting things. Not to mention their feat selection, which can sort of allow you to specialize. Do you want power attack for more damage, or maybe you want some grapple and athletic support? From giants to spirits to animals, your barbarian is going to be incredibly unique to you and be able to do a lot of cool stuff including hit things for tons of damage. Bards in Pathfinder 2e are a fickle beast. They excel amazingly in some aspects and are incredibly limited in others. They do have access to some incredibly powerful, unique focus cantrips, which are spells they can cast and sustain all day long if they want to, namely Inspire Courage. They're also the only spellcaster in the game who only has access to the occult spell list, which is a really unique spell list. It's not quite as powerful as arcane or as much support as divine, but rather it's got some really unique abilities and a little bit of everything involved in it. People tend to forget that the Bard is a full spellcaster in Pathfinder 2e, so if you're looking for a spellcaster with a little bit of quirkiness to them, Try to bard. The champion, often referred to as a paladin in other systems, is the ultimate divine warrior of justice, or injustice if you make an evil champion. They are easily the most defensive class in the game, and with the right feat selection and equipment on you, you can become an almost untouchable monster that can protect not only their allies, but also themselves. Combine this with the fact that they have access to some specific spells and some of their feats give them bonuses against specific creatures, and in the right campaign, your champion could easily become the most powerful thing around. Clerics are likely the most straightforward spellcaster in Pathfinder 2e. They are limited only to the divine spell list, though do get a few additional options based on their deity, and they're really good at supporting people. With tons of feats that grant them ways to augment and improve their healing spells, they also get a bunch of free spell slots per day specifically for the heal spell, or the harm spell if you're evil. This allows them to be one of the single strongest healers in the entire system. So if you're looking for someone to support the party or even empower yourself with some crazy strong spells, consider checking out a cleric. In Pathfinder 2e, the druid is so much more than a nature cleric. Their subclass dictates a lot of their playstyle, granting them special abilities like a focus on shape-shifting or storm magic or even focus on their animal companion. All druids may have access to the primal spell list, but they will be incredibly customizable and unique depending on the type of druid you want to be. In my opinion, druids are maybe the most customizable class in the game. They can really do it all. You can be a healer, you can be a buff machine, you can be a frontline fighter, you can be a backline spellcaster. Druids can do it all, and they are great at it. The fighter. Do you want to hit stuff? 
Let me reword that. Do you want to crit stuff? Are critical hits your favorite part of combat and you love that thrill of rolling double damage dice? Well, look no further than the fighter. Fighters don't have a subclass, but they do have a wide assortment of feats to choose from, and each assortment of feats sort of supports a different weapon style. Sword and board, dual wielding, archery, two-handed power weapons, there are feats to support all of it. And yes, fighters do have an accuracy bump over almost every other class in the game. Basically a plus two to hit over anything else. Barbarians, rangers, monks, fighters have an advantage. And not only is this a plus two to hit, but it is also a plus two to crit due to Pathfinder 2E's plus 10, minus 10 critical hit system. Speaking from experience, fighters are pretty simple to play and really stupid fun. Gunslingers aren't too different from fighters. They're the only other class in the game who are on par with them in accuracy, gaining that plus two to hit over other classes. However, the gunslinger specifically needs to use firearms or crossbows. The Gunslinger is hyper-specialized for ranged combat, but they do have some options you can take to make them both viable in melee or even incredibly powerful in melee. A lot of your playstyle is going to depend on your subclass, whether you pick Sniper for long range, Vanguard for being right up in their face, a mid-range Pistolero, or an evasive Drifter darting around the battlefield. Meanwhile, their feat selection gives you sort of new and creative ways to use your firearms. You can load the bullets with smoke, or even gain jump distance by shooting the ground below you, or even unlocking a locked door with your gun. I'm not kidding. I love this class. The Inventor takes some basic game mechanics like weapons and armor and makes them even more advanced. Throughout the game, from levels 1 to 20, you will carry your invention with you. This could be a weapon, a suit of armor, or even a construct companion. As you level up, you'll be able to tinker with your invention, giving it new hoo-hahs and doodads to make it completely unique. Maybe you have a longsword that's spring-loaded to give you reach, or maybe your armor invention allows you to blend into your environment like a chameleon, or maybe your construct companion can stretch out into a massive wall to block projectiles and protect your party. The choices are vast, and I mean vast when it comes to an inventor. You will have such unique equipment, and if you want items that are completely unlike anything anyone else can have, play an inventor. Have you ever wanted to play Sherlock Holmes in a tabletop RPG? Well, now you can. Investigators are a really interesting melting pot of abilities. At first glance, they might seem similar to something like a rogue, but they're a bit more than that. Some of them can craft items, some of them can interrogate people better than others, and they all have access to some really roleplay-focused investigation feats. But all investigators have a really unique combat style. Utilizing Devise a Stratagem, the investigator can actually see their attack roll ahead of time. They can then choose if they want to attack with the number rolled, or forego the attack action and do something else. But if the investigator does attack with this roll, not only can they use intelligence for the attack roll in place of strength or dexterity, but they also activate their strategic strike feature, dealing even more damage. If you want a totally unique class that really stands out from the crowd, try out an investigator. The Magus is the ultimate all-or-nothing class. Utilizing their Spell Strike feature, they get to attack with both their weapon and a spell at the exact same time. One roll compared to armor class, and if you miss, you miss both the attack and the spell. But if you hit, oh boy, if you hit, you better hope you have enough dice to roll. Regardless of the result, you do need to spend an action later to recharge your spell strike, meaning the Magus is one of the most difficult classes to balance from an action economy standpoint. But talk to me after you swing a great axe imbued with Disintegrate. The Monk is such a fascinating class to build. Similar to the Fighter, it does not have a subclass to choose, but rather, their feats will dictate their playstyle. Monks have access to more than 15 unique stances, and every stance both gives you a unique unarmed attack and a permanent bonus of some kind, so long as you're in the stance. Monks can throw fire, they can drop a haymaker on people, and they can even poison enemies with their unarmed strikes. And all of this is without even mentioning the key magic. If you're looking for an insanely customizable class with some really strong base class features, 
check out the Monk, you won't be disappointed. The Oracle is easily the most complicated class in Pathfinder 2e, but it's also one of the most deep and flavorful. All Oracles select a mystery subclass and are afflicted with a curse related to that mystery. This curse is exacerbated by the use of revelation spells. As you use these spells, your curse worsens, applying more and more penalties, but also granting more and more power. A flame oracle, after worsening their curse, may have their vision clouded by smoke or maybe even burst into flames, but those flames will also hurt enemies around them. On top of that entire system, they have access to the Divine Spell List as a full spontaneous spellcaster. There is a lot to balance when it comes with the Oracle, but if you think you can handle it, it is totally worth it. The Ranger actually works in this system. More than works, the Ranger is the single strongest single target damage dealer in the game. When the Ranger uses their Hunt Prey feature and attacks that target, they get bonuses based on their Hunter's Edge. And these bonuses are insanely powerful. Bonuses to damage, reduced penalties for multiple attacks, bonuses to armor class against that prey specifically. Add this on top of insanely powerful feats like Twin Takedown, which is two attacks for one action at level one, and the Ranger will output more damage than anything else against a single target. They are the ultimate boss killer. The Rogue is a skill monkey. Sure, they've got sneak attacks and whatnot, but more than anything, the Rogue is designated by their incredible number of skills. For context, Pathfinder 2e has 15 unique skills, not counting lore skills, and rogues get to start with 7 plus their intelligence modifier in skills. They also get to increase their skills twice as often as any other class. It is not uncommon for a rogue to be better at religion than a cleric. Rogues are also the only class that can choose their key ability score based on their subclass. Aside from constitution, a rogue can have any ability score be their key score. If you want a character who can do it all outside of combat, check out the Rogue. Sorcerers are pretty much what you'd expect. They can cast magic directly from their bloodline, and they can cast whatever they want, whenever they want, without preparing specific spells. Keep in mind, however, that sorcerers are far more limited in the number of spells that they know. Unlike a cleric or a druid who have access to their entire spell list each day, sorcerers only have access to three or four spells of each spell level. Also, in Pathfinder 2e, the Sorcerer is one of the classes that can cast from any of the four spell lists, Arcane, Primal, Divine, and Occult, depending on their bloodline. The Summoner is another complex class, but if you want to play as two characters at the same time, this is the one for you. As a spellcaster, the Summoner is far more limited than others in that they only get four spell slots per day, but they also have access to their Eidolon. The Eidolon is connected to the Summoner through a spiritual bond and can cover a lot of the weaknesses the Summoner may have. A physically focused Eidolon can be on the front line while the Summoner hangs back and throws out spells. Or you can have your Eidolon also be magically focused and throw out spells right alongside you. Regardless, you need to be careful as you and your Eidolon share hit points. If one of you takes damage, your shared health goes down, and if it hits zero, your Eidolon will disappear and you'll fall unconscious. The hardest part of the Summoner is figuring out the action economy, as you and your Eidolon share your three actions per turn. Aside from some special tandem actions that let you both act, you'll have to figure out how to dispense those three actions per turn between two characters. Do you like consistent bonus damage on all of your attacks? Do you like incorporating skills like intimidation and acrobatics into your combat routine? And do you like massive finishers that deal more damage than a barbarian with a great axe? Play a swashbuckler. The swashbuckler is surprisingly simple to play, and their class features are really great for integrating roleplay into combat. See, swashbucklers use a system called panache, and when you succeed at a certain skill action, you gain panache. While you have panache, all of your attacks deal a flat amount of bonus damage every single time they hit. Or you can spend your panache, losing it, but able to perform a massive finishing move that can do a huge amount of damage. With tons of feet to support their skill actions like acrobatics and how fun it is to balance gaining and spending panache, I cannot recommend the Swashbuckler enough. 
The Witch is one of the more interesting spellcasters. Similar to the Sorcerer, they can cast from one of any of the four spell lists determined by their subclass. That subclass also grants a Hex Cantrip, which is a unique spell only available to witches of that subclass. Every witch also starts with a familiar granted by their patron. Now, unlike a sorcerer, the witch is still a prepared caster, and this familiar functions exactly like a wizard's spellbook. In order to prepare a spell for the day, your familiar needs to know that spell. If you love the idea of your familiar being an integral part of your character and having tons of feats to make your familiar more interesting, you might love playing a witch. And finally, the wizard. It's a wizard. The classic spell-slinging arcane master is as reliable as it's ever been, with a few little quality of life introductions from Paizo to make character creation a little more interesting. First, you pick an arcane school that you specialize in, gaining some bonus spell slots for spells of that school. Or you pick Universalist because it gives you the single best spell in the game. And after that, because wizards are nerds, you get to pick your arcane thesis. This is something that your wizard does different from most other wizards, whether that be combining spell slots or crafting your own staff or even creating a more powerful familiar than most can manage. If you want to cast spells and be damn good at it, go for a wizard. And those are the 20 classes available for you to choose from in Pathfinder 2e. This video will be dated in a couple of months because the Thaumaturge and the Psychic will be out, but hopefully I helped you out in deciding which class you'll want to play either in your first game or your next game of Pathfinder 2e. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. Without them, none of this is possible. They help me keep the lights on and pay my rent. If you would like to join them and help support me and the channel, there is a link in the description to the Nonat Ones Patreon page. Or if you want to support me in a different way, consider pledging to Sinclair's library using the other link in the description. We'd love to see even more funding go to that. You know, we just cracked 100k, but we've got some amazing stretch goals all the way up to 300,000. So if that interests you, check them out. I want to thank you very much for watching. And until next time, Nonat Ones.